Delighted to welcome the Health Minister, Helen Whateley, to the show. Good morning to you, Minister. Good morning. Good morning. Now, you're here to talk about uh, a new bid to um, actually get more nurses working in the NHS. We've seen a lot more interest in those sorts of careers uh, as a result of obviously the focus on the NHS for understandable reasons for the last uh, six, seven, eight months. Um, tell us uh, what sort of uh, extra numbers of nurses we're looking at and how are you going to see those numbers improve? You're absolutely right. So today we are announcing an increase in the number of nurse apprenticeships. Uh, so we're more than doubling that scheme so that we'll get 8,000 new apprentices through that scheme to qualify as registered nurses. It's all part of our determination to increase the number of nurses in the NHS. We're going to increase that by 50,000. Um, we're seeing a real surge in interest in, increase in, in careers in healthcare and nursing in particular. We've got an increase in applications for the usual degree route to start at university this autumn. And as I said, we're also boosting the apprenticeship route to enable more nurses to earn as they learn. I mean, a lot of people listening to that will very much welcome that. But we know one of the big issues is retention, isn't it? And that's that, you know, keeping the nursing staff, the experienced nursing staff that we've already got. And yes, lots of amazing uh, men and women came back uh, to the healthcare service during the, the crisis to, to help out. And that was an extraordinary uh, thing to, to see. But uh, trying to keep those people on board, a lot that's about the conditions, the, the, the pay that they're living with the the, uh, the, uh, the the system of rotors and the like. Um, how confident are you that you can actually keep nurses once you've actually got them into the system? You're absolutely right. Retention is vital. And part of that, we've got to make sure that we're looking after those who work in our NHS. Just over a week ago, NHS England published its people plan about a whole swathe of things to make working in the NHS a better experience, including, as you referred to, uh, more flexible working. So to support the flexibilities, the hours that the nurses and other healthcare workers might want to embed some of the things that actually gave the experience that well, was really tough working during uh, the peak of the pandemic. We also heard from healthcare staff about things that work better, that they felt they had more autonomy, they had uh, more support, for instance, the, the hot meals and things like that. So we're taking steps to make sure that whole experience okay. of working in the NHS is better as well. And what, and what about the pay rises they'd also like? Well, I absolutely hear the call for uh, pay rise and particularly hearing from nurses because we had just a couple of weeks ago the announcement of the uh, pay rise for many doctors, which was part of the regular uh, pay cycle. Nurses are on what's called the Agenda for Change pay system. Um, they're on the final year of a three-year pay deal. So we'll be looking at nurses' pay over the coming months with an announcement on that next year. OK, um, let's also talk about what happens with schools. Front page of a lot of the newspapers today is uh, how schools are going to go back. The Prime Minister said there was a moral duty to reopen schools. As we know, it's the, the poorest kids uh, who are losing out the most. Children's Commissioner Anne Longfield has called for pupils and teachers to be routinely tested for coronavirus. Now, this was certainly uh, what we were told would be happening. It's also what we know other countries who've successfully brought their pupils back to school have been able to do are we going to be in a position come early september just three weeks away now uh, to actually do regular testing to make sure we don't see outbreaks in schools and make sure that kids can actually get you know full time lessons every week as uh, the prime minister says he wants so yes as the prime minister said yesterday in the sunday papers it's a national priority to get children back in school this september we have to have children fully back at school um, because much so you know, parents, teachers have gone to huge efforts to keep education going through lockdown. There's nothing the same as being in school. A couple of things to say about sort of COVID in schools. So firstly, we know that the risk of transmission in schools we're seeing from researchers, risk of transmission is very low. Also, the risk to children uh, from COVID itself is very low. There are extra steps that schools are able to take to bring those risks down even further. For instance, staggered start and opening times, um, teachers really drilling kids on, on sanitation and, and hand washing and things like that. Um, coming to your point about testing, on routine testing, we absolutely follow the advice of the Chief Medical Officer, um, SAGE, the advisory, scientific advisory group. At the moment, they're not advising routine testing for schools. But as I said, the crucial thing is that schools will be safe and children should be coming back this autumn. OK, and, and aren't you surprised by the uh, new poll that su suggested that uh, at this moment in time, if there were a vaccine developed for COVID-19 uh, and, uh, and it was made available, that 53% of Britons wouldn't agree to use that vaccine? Uh, yes, yeah, so I know that you know as when we 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 have a vaccine, 
absolutely and i would be up for being being vaccinated we should do whatever we can to make sure that we reduce the circulation of covid in our community to keep people safe who are most at risk from the illness and so that we can enable life to get on uh, as close to normal as possible um, let's also talk about what's happening to uh, people who are trying to make their holidays after long lockdowns. Most people b- holidaying here in Britain if, if uh, are doing anything other than a staycation in their own homes. Uh, but we did see many hundreds of thousands of uh, Brits who are on holiday in Spain facing quarantine for two weeks on their return at uh, just a few hours notice. Uh, now we've had more d- destinations added to the list. There's a lot of talk that France could be added to the list at the end of this week. Uh, it's the second most popular holiday destination for Brits. Uh, what is the likelihood of that? And if there is the case, uh, what is the likelihood that uh, the government's going to consider to make sure that people are compensated if they're told uh, to quarantine if they return from holiday? Because, of course, lots of people not even eligible for sick pay, and even if they are eligible for sick pay uh, or uh, for, for do this, uh, not able to pay their mortgage on it. So what I can say is that we keep the uh, levels of, of COVID and the, the situation in other countries constantly under review. In response to people's you know, totally understandable desire to, to go on holiday, we did the air bridges, travel corridors, so that you could go to some countries with low rates without having to quarantine. But as we said, when we put that policy in place, we would have to keep a watch on it. And we took action in Spain when we saw the rates going up there rapidly. With France, we, get, we have to keep it under review uh, and i would say to people you know just just keep an eye if you're planning a holiday keep an eye on the foreign office advice and be clear on your insurance uh, will in we get notice will people get notice because we, france has already got a higher rate than we have at the current time and it is slowly going up very different from the large sharp very quick spike from spain but but what is the point of infection rate that the government will step in and say now we have quarantine do we have a, a specific number that it's set up? well it's it's not quite as simple as that because it's a combination of looking at the overall uh, number of cases, something called the positivity rate, which is the proportion of tests that are test positive. Uh, the quantity of tests that any country is doing is clearly a factor in that as well. Where they're doing more testing, they may have a lower positivity rate. So you need to look at a range of these factors. We take the advice of the chief medical officer, the clinical advice on what is the right thing to do. But we're in a pandemic. This is a horror disease. We have to do what is right for the health of our nation. Okay, just a little bit earlier in the show, I spoke to Nigel Farage, the Brexit party leader, who's been highlighting this problem with migrants coming across the channel, illegal migrants. We don't know who they are, what their aims are here. Your uh, colleague, Priti Patel, the Home Secretary, uh, has appointed a new clandestine channel threat commander. Um, Is this a sign that the government does actually take this issue seriously now? I mean, it's a bit strange, isn't it quarantining Brits returning from holiday uh, and yet we've got you know hundreds upon hundreds thousands of uh, migrants crossing the channel um, and we don't know about an awful lot of them is my guess and they're not going into quarantine uh, doesn't it make a bit of a nonsense of our borders I would say we absolutely take this issue very seriously we've got an unacceptable number of migrants making that dangerous crossing over the channel and though you know, on a sunny day it may look like a Uh, an easy thing to do. The fact is, it is really risky. It's dangerous. They're paying illegal people smugglers to help them get across. Um, This is something that actually has to stop. The Home Secretary is determined that this will not continue to be a viable route uh, to the UK. My colleague, the Minister Chris Philp, is going to be in France this week talking to the French government and taking more steps so that we can bring this to an end. OK, and just finally, I promise this is the final question, Helen Whaley. Um, Dawn Butler, the Labour MP for Brent Central, has claimed that she was the victim of racial profiling by a Metropolitan Police when uh, she was in a car that was stopped uh, by the police uh, at the weekend. Um, are the British police institutionally racist? Look, I don't think, no, racism in any any setting is completely unacceptable. We don't accept it in our police. We don't accept it in the NHS. We don't accept it in our society. I, ca- I can't comment on the specific situation that, that Dawn Butler was in. Uh, but, but do you believe they are institutionally racist? I, I don't have that view, no. Um, and as I say, overall, though, we have to make sure and we are determined as a government um, and with the work that we're doing, led by my colleague Kemi Badenoch, uh, to make sure that we don't have people held back because of their ethnicity. OK, Helen Waitley, thank you very much indeed. That's the uh, Health and Care Minister.